Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad, and today I'm very honored to speak about a company called Chainium. And to explain this in detail, we have the CEO and co-founder. His name is Sasha Rakja. Sasha, thank you very much, mate, for being on the channel tonight. Thanks, Brad, and the honors on my side as well. Well, thank you, mate. Now, obviously, you are leading a very exciting uh, company called Chainium, uh, and on your website, Ness, also in your white paper, it explains that you are reconceptualizing the equity market to really meet the needs of this decentralized technology that we see, known as blockchain. Now, also, you're trying to make a fair in what's called a supranational exchange, and that's exciting because you're really, once again, allowing this to be very far-reaching, breaking all borders, being a cross-border system for the globe. Now. To do this again, you must have a lot of experience, and Sasha does have that. I've checked your credentials. So Sasha, just as a quick recap, you've done some pretty impressive things. You've worked for many multimedia companies and technology uh, services. You've been a lead engineer in many of, of these projects in the last decade, or actually more. And you've worked in uh, various positions right around the world, including Australia. And obviously, I'd know that being Australian, but you've had some pretty important roles there in DLT. So Sasha, can you tell us, a bit about yourself in, in, in respect yep. to that mentioning and also why you deserve to lead this innovative company. Yeah, I've been, I've been a software engineer for more than 20 years and I've, as you said, I've worked in multiple uh, teams around the world. I've worked in Germany, in Australia, in the US, Canada and, and, and most recently in the UK. Um, I, I was the, the CIO for one of the largest uh, share registry companies in the world and I've I've managed teams up to 500 staff around the world and and I, I've delivered and built so many projects and services within kind of that shareholder registry uh, equity space. Right. So, uh, so I have a lot of experience. <laughs> sure. And you, what's important, you also know how to lead and in, you need to know how to lead in this industry. But Sash, can we also talk about your experience, particularly with uh, companies like ComputerShare? And the reason is because that has some specific um, relationship with uh, finance particularly, and, 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 and more importantly in centralized finance, which is uh, under, underpinning some of the things that really motivated you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the, the team and I, we have a lot of experience in that space and uh, we, we've really seen inefficiencies in the old world and we're trying to change it into the new world. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, let's talk about that in more detail. You've alluded to a problem in the sense that, you know, you mentioned that you want to solve old world problems or old, old school problems, particularly those that are barriers to access and cut down middlemen. So can you explore uh, that context? Can you tell us exactly what you foresaw as this problem that you wanted to address? Well, it's, it's fairly simple. If you are a private business, you're wanting to raise capital, you have only so many avenues to go to, right? You can ask friends and family to, to give you funding. Mm -hmm. You can ask your local bank to, to raise, to give you some money. And every, every one of these steps is time consuming, takes time, and you'll be knocked back. Right. At the same time, if you're a publicly listed company, you need all the different middlemen. You need a, a registrar, you need a clearinghouse to settle your shares and equity. You need a broker and a bank. And so you have all these middlemen in the middle and they're, they're basically just adding fees, costs to you as a business or you as an investor. And we said, there must be a better way. You should be able to directly connect a business owner to an investor without the middleman. And that's what we're doing. Right, so clearly there's quite a lot of different stakeholders that will be cut out of this process and really advantage the, 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 the key parties of the business and also the user. So that would surely would be exciting for the majority of people around the world who would interact in a very lay sense as consumers and users of this service. So you're cutting out IPOs and transforming them into a new, new decentralized system that's going to really uh, fast track the process. Let's explore how though in the context of blockchain. So why blockchain and why is it the uh, technology of choice? Well, well, within within all these legacy apps and services, you have multiple systems, multiple services, multiple uh, middlemen involved. And what they do is they achieve trust to you as an individual, either as a business owner or an investor. Mm -hmm. If you go to a bank and you open a trading account, you know you can trust the bank in the old traditional world. However, in the background, and I've managed a lot of those systems myself, you have um, ledgering systems, you have reconciliation systems that have a high degree of fault tolerance and, and, and issues in itself. So 
you, you need that trust between two parties. Otherwise, you cannot get into a relationship, into a contract with one another. Blockchain technology for us allows to create that trust between a business owner and an investor. So if a business owner sells equity, private equity, or maybe even publicly listed equity, he knows that the person on the other side is the investor and is able to make a transaction. So that trust between the two parties without anyone tampering in the middle is given with blockchain. And that's why we've picked blockchain technology to, right. to build that platform. Okay, well, let's explore this further because clearly what you've explained is that you become an automatic service because obviously automation is built into blockchain. But there's also two layers to that, or two aspects, and that is your permissioned and your permissionless design. And as you would appreciate, that many different uh, closed networks are, are proponents of the permissioned. So in the context of many different banks, for example, or financial services, they are certainly in looking in that direction. So what do you say to that? And what is your plan with regard to permission and permissionlessness? Well, we have our blockchain has two layers. So we're building our own blockchain. We're not utilizing someone else's. And uh, we have a private and a public component. The private component is really to protect uh, either shareholder investor data or business owner data. Yeah, the, the public component is all the transactions because equity transactions should be publicly available. You should know the investors that hold equity in a specific company. Yeah, so in terms of permissionless systems, um, centralization or decentralization, we have a bit of a mix mm -hmm. between the two because you know you need massive storage capacity to store you know shareholder documents and these sort of things and we looked at on-chain off-chain solutions and all that right so we have a bit of a mix uh, and we're still exploring but we are very very keen in terms of you know building that decentralized uh, sorry that decentralized platform and network and allowing other parties to utilize it I so see. we're building a whole new equity environment i uh, see so how did the process go in terms of uh creating this right from the from the ground up obviously that's a big process so how long did it take you and where are you at currently with the design of the blockchain well we've started we've we founded the business last year but it's been in our heads for a long time and, and a lot of my peers and myself we've got a great team we've all worked together for 15 years so the three co-founders have been we've worked together in the same company for more than 15 years so we've been basically designing, conceptualizing for quite some time. Last year, we kicked off formally and, and as, as its own business and entity. And we're, we're full on in terms of software engineering. We're planning to release the test net. So basically, our uh, prototype uh, test environment with um, you know, transactions, with validations, consensus mechanisms, etc. cetera, uh, this, this uh, European summertime. Mm -hmm. And we're planning to launch our main net so that the, the core function and features available to businesses end of the year. I see. Yeah. Well, that must be so exciting. So that's where we are. Well, congratulations, because clearly you are moving ahead quite fast in the process. And we yeah. will talk about you in, with regard to competitors or you know, other similar designs later. But let's now explore, Sasha, essentially, I guess, the core tech of your company in terms of what you really offer in terms of tools, techniques for the business, and particularly with regard to specific features, which we can go through one by one. But as a, in a nutshell first, what can you tell us about the tools, the toolbox? Yeah, yeah. So so we, in terms of tools, we're, we're building the equity network um, underneath. So we, we, we stated it's almost like a global digital share certificate. So if, if you think about shares, that are being traded around the world, you have 200 or more stock exchanges. Yeah, right. And we're build, basically building one. We're building one protocol, one, one uh, digital share certificate that is unique and that can be utilized around the world. We're trying to create a real global offering, decentralized in the true fashion of um, um, you know, technology. Um, uh, what's our tool set? We're also building apps on top of it. Mm -hmm. So. On the one side, we want third parties and other businesses, and that's why we are forging a lot of partnerships with other companies to build platforms and products on our blockchain. Right. But at the same time, we're building our own apps because we want to, almost as you say in Australia, you want to eat your own dog food, right? <laughs> right. So okay. we, <laughs> we, want to, we want to basically, we're, we're pushing walk. out a business owner app, right. so where businesses can list their equity and their, their offerings on our platform. 
We're also building investor apps, which are mobile um, um, responsive design, mobile compliant, where investors can quickly go onto our platform, mm -hmm. look at the offers, and then transact. And um, in phase two, and this is probably something we're building towards the end of the year till next year, okay. we're also looking at an exchange functionality where those equity tokens, as mm -hmm. you call them in that kind of ICO Context, token yeah. uh, word, where this is all tradable. Wow. I see. So that's exciting that you are going to have not only these prototypes, which are available, I understand, through you know through your website. You can go and uh, experience them if you want to. But more importantly is that you are building out these mobile facilities, which really relate well to the current context of technology usership because everyone's obviously so mobile right now, so relevant yeah, in terms would, of applications. Yeah. And we're big fans of these kind of business apps, you know, Robinhood, uh, Revolut in the UK, mm -hmm. um, you know, Monzo, they have great apps and they are improving digital banking. We want to do the same within the, uh, the share dealing, share trading space, but we're not focusing primarily on the apps. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on the infrastructure, but we want a whole unique experience and want to do both things at the same time. Sure. Well, that's exciting. Let's explore now some of those key features you've listed in your white paper. The first one is, refers uh, to your digital share transactions. So you have a specific facility for that. Can you tell us a bit more about that uh, and what that refers to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, just in terms of the transaction, it's really, really simple. Mm -hmm. you, you create an offer. You, you list the offer on our platform on, an, on a marketplace, mm -hmm. and then people can bid and people can acquire that. There are a lot of more intricacies that we're building in, and you know, in true agile fashion, we're adding every month new features and functions into that. So in initial stages, it will be a simple offer. Mm -hmm. In later phases, we're offering you know, corporate actions where you can effectively list an offer with dividends. You can list an offer where you have specific voting rights because mm -hmm. voting rights are very, very important. We want to offer you know, AGM, um, annual general meeting type services in future. Right. So the, the, in general, for us, it's not just about an offer. It's also about managing the shareholders after, after, after the, the public listing or the, the equity listing. Okay, yeah. so you thought about that. But what about in, uh, confidential data, for example? How do you manage that in terms of whether it be encrypted yeah, data I mean, con or, or privatized data? How do you manage Sorry. that? Have we frozen? Yeah, it's back on. Yeah, okay, so I'll ask you that again. So obviously, you know, that's important as well, Sasha, but how do you then manage uh, essentially, sorry, I'll ask this again. It always throws <laughs> me. <laughs> I'll have to edit that bit. <laughs> okay. So Sasha, obviously that's really important, uh, explaining that those transactions, but how do we also ensure that the confidentiality of data and, you know, the user is protected and respected? Yeah, and this is where we have the private blockchain. So the component um, that 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 ring effectively that protects business owner data, mm -hmm. yeah, which is confidential data in terms of you know what are your proceeds, what's what's your revenue, right. uh, what sort of structures do you have, what's your ownership structure, etc. And that is protected. And we're working on on really really modern encryption features. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're also looking at the investor. And the same, we have a private component to that blockchain, which effectively protects your personal data. Right. However, it's very, very important that your personal data is known. So we're working with KYC and AML procedures. We're working with general data protection schemes. We're supporting GDPR, which is big in Europe at the moment or globally. Yeah, so all these kind of regulatory compliant mechanisms we will also have in support. I'm glad you mentioned that because obviously you are a utility service and you represent that with your utility structure, but you are very compliant. And that is important given the climate right Right now, right around the globe, especially in the US, with regards to some of the you know, concerns of the different agencies that are addressing some, some very, you know, let, let's just say, uh, 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 some very concerning projects that do emerge in this space, and you're certainly not one. Let's now explore the built, your, your scalability in terms of how you're building out your scaling and how relevant that is in terms of, you know, the requisites of a blockchain to service the kind of scope that you want to, you know, reach and, and support. 
Yeah, I mean, it's simple. Um, I mean, not not as simple. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that. Um, we're working through, you know, proof of stake, proof of work. Um, uh, we're doing proof of stake at the moment. We're we're basically our blockchain is validating transactions. We're not mining. We're not we're not doing really massive complex algorithms. At the same time, scalability is still something we're working quite hard on. Mm-hmm. Um, um, in in terms of you know the software development, there's a lot of scalability and and performance work that we're doing at the moment because we have to basically manage billions and billions of transactions. That's what we're working on. That was also the decision why we've decided to build our own blockchain because a lot of the existing blockchain technologies um, have scalability and performance issues. And if, if we win clients, we cannot allow them to compete with casino apps or other stuff that is running on all these kind of open and public blockchains. So no crypto yeah. So that's what so no crypto kitties yeah. for you to challenge, you know, the computational success of your blockchain. But let's explore a little bit further in terms of how your testing's going. Obviously we don't want to necessarily throw numbers at you or you don't perhaps don't want to throw a number out there right now, but how I how happy are you with it considering what you need to be able to do? Yeah, I mean, testing is going okay. I mean, we're, we're still at an early stage in terms of the, the features and functions, the, the modules we're building. Um, we're, we're building as test-driven developments, so all our tests are built in while we actually build and the, the, the software and the products and the modules. Mm-hmm. So we're applying a, a proper test-driven approach in our software development practices. Scalability performance testing, we're doing a lot of automated testing on the side. Mm-hmm. It's still not there where we want it to be. I mean, we are quite purist and quite perfectionist in the sense, you know, half of the teams team are German. So, you know, sure. we will not stop until we have it fully sorted. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're still not 100% there, but we will get there as more and more clients we onboard. And it's very clear that you are very confident that, you know, when the time arises and you do have that uh, business, you know, uh, filtering through and entering into the, your marketplace, that then you will then be ready uh, for the for that to be a functional service. Um, finally, yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry, absolutely. go ahead. So that's I think that's really yeah. important that you were so transparent about it, though, because Sasha, quite simply, we hear a lot about scalability right now, and we talk about huge numbers. But the reality is, many of these blockchains are not ready for the kind of things, and you have made it very clear that you are working towards the readiness. Now, in terms of your global digital share certificate, is there anything else you want to add just to explain perhaps you know, what it is and why that's so relevant to your whole architecture? Well, because it just simply doesn't exist, right? Um, they, if, if you, now think about it, you are an Apple on IBM or a, a Disney or whatever, and you, you want to do a, a capital raising activity, you want to sell more shares, or you want to list primarily, right. you have to pick a stock exchange and you have to pick all these different advisors and functions. You, you, need a, you need an underwriter, you need a clearinghouse, and you need to pick a stock exchange. So mm-hmm. now imagine you as Apple, you're listed on the NASDAQ or, or US stock exchanges. It is very hard for someone in India or in Asia or even in Australia to suddenly acquire shares on the Nasdaq stock exchange unless you, through your broker and dealer locally, have a relationship with the Nasdaq, for example. I see. Yeah, but it's it's a pers- it's it's a contractual relationship that person has. There are so many countries that have no access to these big big corporations and their equity yet. A company like Apple or you know Disney, IBM, they sell shares. Uh, sorry, they sell uh, consumer goods around the world. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'd be if I'd be a new business, a new startup, you know, or in a, a business that wants to go pop public, why would you restrict yourself to a regional stock exchange when all your consumers are global? Yeah. Right. So we're trying to change that. We're building a global network. We're building a global environment where any business that is global or regional or local that wants to offer equity onto the global scale, uh, we will allow that through our platform. I yep. see. So you really are breaking those borders down. And yep. in, in that sense, I wanted to ask you in the context of the tech about cross-chain design. Obviously, you're building out your own blockchain, but uh, is there any plan to then uh, interact in some way with other blockchains? Yes, we want to. And, and we have relationships with kind of middle-tier providers which you've mentioned before that we're working towards we're also looking at interfaces and middle layers really to allow for others because i mean we you know there are a lot of great technologies and concepts around and we want to be able to be 
the single most important protocol from an equity perspective. At the same time, we want to allow other platforms and platform um, users to utilize our network. So we will definitely put a lot of work into that. We haven't done it yet because we're primarily focusing on our, ourselves selfishly at the moment, but we will open up next year. <laughs> well, you've got, you've, yeah. got to, you've got to crawl before you can walk and then walk yeah. and run. So let's yeah. explore now your benefits. Now, Sasha, if I asked you to tell me two or three key benefits, if I was a user and I was going to you to consider using your, your service and applications, what would you say to convince me? Well, well, first of all, again, compared to the traditional world, the, the fees, the costs, right? If you want to acquire an offer, um, the costs are minimal if they should actually be free, to be honest, to an investor. So so that is one benefit, yeah, the costs, because you're reducing all these middlemen, all these layers, et cetera. Right. And the other one is speed, right? I mean, if, if you think about it, stock exchanges, they have a start and a close, yeah? And then on Saturday, Sunday at night, they're not operating because right. there's reconciliation, maintenance work going on, all the infrastructure pro activities need to be reset and all that. So it should be 24-7. Our yeah. platform will be 24-7 as people are used to in the crypto world where Absolutely. you can transact and trade 24-7. Yeah, that, that's another key feature. Sure. And the third one is really about the, the feature richness and the modern um, approach to, to, to the applications and the services we're, we're delivering. So we will offer AGM services, which are fully online, right? Okay. We, we don't like to send physical papers. Yeah? I mean, the traditional shareholder and stock world is still very, very paper driven. Yeah, there's still paper statements sent out. So we want to be eco-friendly mm -hmm. and we will do everything fully electronic. So, so that's our aim. Okay, um, so and those are the benefits. So making it really, you're making it faster and easier for people literally in a fast-moving world. Now, in yeah. your white paper, you have a very interesting graphic with uh, a module design with lots of different components to illustrate those modules with regard to your overall platform. So could you talk us through just, you know, why that's important to have that modular design in terms of functionalities? Yeah, just in, just in terms of software development, right? You want a modular, simple design because you you're building something, a version one and a version two from a technical perspective, and you need to replace it at some stage, right? You, you, the decisions you're making now are very, very important from a software perspective, but you will recapture and you will come back to them. And that's why we're trying to build small modules and concepts that we can replace at some time. At the same time, we want as many people as possible to be able to pick up our product to understand it and that's why creating the software and the architecture very very simple i'm a big believer in simple software design that everyone understands so a programmer should be able to pick up code from someone else and really identify it very easily and then enhance it and build it and that's why we built all these little microservices as as of traditional software development i yeah. see and, and my apologies if the image has sort of gone a bit blurry because for a moment there you did. But thank you for explaining that because obviously those kind of graphics do really help us understand your overall robust architecture and help us break it down as well. Now, let's go back a bit more to that mentioning you had before of the private and the public. Just to better understand the difference between public equity and private equity and how you're catering for those two different markets in your design. Yep, yep. So we're, we're focusing on private equity at the moment. So basically, okay. normal businesses that are medium to large, but that aren't listed on stock exchanges. Yeah, and they have capital raising needs, they need funds, they need money every now and then. And a lot of them are thinking of going public. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these new business, if you look at Spotify a few months ago, they went to the stock exchange, but they they did a, a normal public listing without any big tam-tam, um, without any pre, um, how do you say, without any underlying uh, support from from the, uh, the the primary banks. Okay. And they just went out like that because they wanted to. They want to be different. Uh, we're talking to a number of. Uh, global startups at the moment that have a capital raising needs. They want to go to the stock exchange, but they do not want to support that old legacy system. They're mm -hmm. startups. They have, you know, hundreds and, and millions of, of users and consumers, but they want a whole different experience. Yet they have the same needs. They want to be listed. Right. They want to give equity out to, to people, but they're investors. They want their investors to be consumers. Sure. And those are the businesses we want to attract, absolutely. And clearly yeah. there's a, a large market for that. So let's explore that in the context of the industry itself, of the equity industry globally. How big is this industry we're talking about, Sasha? 
I think it's seven trillion. I mean, I don't like these big numbers because mm. every project throws around uh, it's a seven trillion market and and seven billion, and we'll get fifty sure. percent of it. So sure, but so respectfully, I, I mean, trillion. just to put it in context, yeah. I ask you only because it does pa paint a real yeah. picture of yeah. the validity, you know, of this industry for uh, globally, in that it is a real market and it has veracity yeah. when it comes to applications, uh, certainly in the small business sector as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a $7 trillion market. It's huge. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, let's talk now about your prototypes. You mentioned there are some uh, in terms of your alpha version and you do have those apps, but you know, how can people access them to experience them or can they at all? Uh, and you know, when will these be more prevalent in terms of access? Yeah, I mean, they, we have the investor app and the business owner app there on Google and Android, um, mm -hmm. sorry, in, uh, Android and iOS devices. You can download them. They're really basic prototypes. It really gives you a thought process of how the user experience should look like. Right. There are some fantasy clients in there that, you know, where you can actually acquire equity so you can see how quick a transaction should be. Okay. What we're working in the background on is we have two big software development strands. One is the blockchain, the core development, so we're building the infrastructure, and one is the app development. We have a team building out and improving the apps, which we are selling to clients. Right. So those two developments, and every month we're releasing new updates and we're releasing new versions. Okay, so you mentioned selling. I did want to ask you this uh, you know, later, but this is perfect segue. In terms of revenue, so obviously you want to be a viable company with su yep. you know, a successful revenue uh, aspect to it. So is that happening at all yet, or is that yet to happen as you build out your design? Yeah, yeah, we, are, we have a business development team. Mm -hmm. It's only a handful of people, but we're actively seeking clients. We're having a lot of partnership, joint venture type discussions at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention any names because that would be uh, too early days. I'll but call you yeah, later. we're actively, we're, we're actively, we're actively out there selling. Yeah. Great. Well, in, mon in months down the track, when we chat again, we'll certainly yeah. find the, yeah. uh, those names when it's appropriate. But Sasha, can we yeah. talk now about your team? You have Florian, yourself, and Ermin as key members of this team, and collectively, you have more than a decade of specific industry experience. But can you tell us exactly why they really are so fundamental to the success of chain? Uh, well, well, these guys, they know the equity world as much as I do. So we've worked together, as I said before, for more than 15 years. We know each other for such a long time. Mm. Uh, Florian long. is great. Flo Florian is, uh, he's actually from Liechtenstein where, where we have our headquarters. So he's a, he's a Liechtenstein native mm -hmm. and he's a great detail guy. So he's our operations officer. He looks at facilities, he looks at contracts, HR, all these things that you need to have to have a business running. Um, uh, Ermin is our technology guru. He's mm -hmm. got a lot of experience with business intelligence, with analytics. So he's done a lot of analytics work uh, and database work. Uh, he is fascinated by blockchain technology and started to to work on that last year. So he's the CTO and he's he's working with the development team. Mm -hmm. And I'm basically I'm basically covering all the gaps. I have the experience in terms of the relationships and the global management experience. Um, and I, and I'm just basically filling the gaps. So we're all we're a small team, and mm. everyone has to have multiple hats, and that, that's what we're doing. Okay, so you yeah. have multiple hats. You're a small team. Doesn't doesn't mean that you're an inexperienced team by any means. But how is the workload going? How are you all coping from your experience so far with building this out? I, th I think yeah, I think we're doing well. I mean, we we did the token sale. And that was absolutely mental. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the work to, to lead up to that and the roadshows, the conferences and all that, that, that was amazing. It was a great experience because we built a network of actual people that are following us and that are now fans of what we do, which is mm -hmm. great. And we had so much exposure. However, you know, a lot of people still forget we have to actually, we are business. We have to build these products. We have to focus on these products. We also have to have relationships with clients. We're, we're in meetings all the time. We're talking to a lot of people, advisors. We've got a great network of people. It's a lot of work, but we, we are enjoying it. We wouldn't be doing it um, if we wouldn't enjoy it. I mean, we all left really, really great businesses and, and great jobs to do this. So we First and foremost, we all have a lot of fun what we're doing. I that, see. That's really important. So you took a big <laughs> risk, a leap of faith, and you are now enjoying this process. But I want to take you back a bit to the ICO itself. And I know that you're reticent to talk about numbers, but we are going to. And that's with regard <laughs> to the ICO in terms of how did it play out and you know, how successful was it, just generally speaking. And more, more to the point, you know, the pump and dump issue that we often see, did you experience that and have you in any way recovered if that did happen to become a much more steady and organic 
uh, you know, development and, and company. Yeah, we've, we've done our token sale a little bit different compared to other projects. And obviously everyone says, you know, they've done well and all that. Um, we, we didn't do a lot of marketing. We did everything ourselves. So even the smart contract development, uh, the website, everything else, we've done pretty much everything ourselves. And that was a great experience that gave us a good insight into how the mechanisms work. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we had no prior experience of a token sale. We had advisors that gave us good in insight and feedback, but at the same time, we just wanted to explore everything ourselves. And it, it was a six month journey we went through. And uh, we started off with a community of probably 10, 20, 50 people, which then grew as, you know, we were talked about to, I think, 5,000 where we are now. Right. And uh, yeah, it's been a great experience. We didn't hit our targets, to be honest. Um, we had an 8 million uh, hard cap, which we didn't uh, didn't achieve. I think we've only raised 5 million because okay. at that time we were in the, I think it was um, early April or, you were in a very or end tough of March. Market. You were in a, this it was, was uh, across the board, this happened quite a bit, Sasha. So yeah. you know, it's not unexpected given that the, the conditions at the time, but you did raise more than half. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and And... Even even though we didn't sell out within within minutes like other projects, we were still very very happy. And from what we've achieved, and we we understood that the market sometimes goes goes against you. But at the same time, we raised all the funds we need to build the products. So right, and that's what I wanted that to ask you about. Important. That was the fundamental point of this discussion: is to find out whether you had enough capital to really build this out to become the kind of uh, company that you you anticipated right from the outset. So you're saying you have that. Now I wanted to take you now across the present time with your discussions of tokens and perfect discussion right now with regard to security versus utility. Can you comment on this matter itself and explain specifically what your token purpose and design is for? Yeah, we have a, we have a utility token, so we're not a security. Um, we are, we are, our token is regulated, so it, it basically runs and fuels our network and our platform. Um, the token we have is used to effectively, um, you know, pay for transaction fees yeah, and also for pegging of offers. Mm -hmm. um, the, the key is it's a utility token and the key is that it runs on our platform and our software. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the secondary market trading and all that, it's, it's a side effect of it, but it's not our prim primary focus. And, and that's very, very important. We get a lot of questions from, uh, from community members, you know, what about exchanges? What about this and that? And uh, people don't understand you cannot comment on these things Absolutely. because we are a utility token. Um, our token has a specific purpose and no other purpose from a business perspective. Sure. And that's why we cannot comment on it. And uh, we're not doing it. Uh, we're not giving profitability feedback. We're not saying that it will do X, Y, and Z because simply that's not the focus of our token and that's not the focus of our project. Sure. So in a nutshell, if you could tell us in a sentence even, what is the specific purpose of your token? Yeah, the, the purpose of our token is really to to pay for transaction fees, to, to help us with the infrastructure underlying and help us with pegging of offers. It is there to run the whole ecosystem of the equity environment. I yeah. see. So I, I know often I ask this, so please, you know, excuse <laughs> my frankness, but how do, how do you foresee the value of your this utility token growing? How does that mechanism happen given that you are specifically that transactional value? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really simple because there's a finite uh, amount of tokens available and the more offers you have, the more users, more investors and business owners you have, the more, the more scarce the token will get on our platform. I see. So are you yeah, optimistic? And that will, sorry to interrupt, but are you optimistic given the scarcity factor that as you build out more uh, clientele that essentially this, this utility should improve in value? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, it all depends on the success of the business. And if the business does well, then the token and everything else will do well. And we are, we are seeing great feedback from businesses. We're seeing a lot of investors that are interested to utilize our platform. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't comment on the token as such, but our business will do well and subsequently everything else will do well too. That's exciting. Sasha, can we talk now about some use cases as well, just to understand better how this can be applied in the real world context of decentralized uh, equity uh, services? How could someone, you know, apply this and, and really see the, the potential? 
Yeah, I mean, there, there, are, there are multiple areas. So if you have existing businesses, they might already be listed on the stock exchange, but they want to raise more capital to build a new prototype or they want to build a new car or they want to build an, a new facility that creates new energy drinks. But they want to do a different route of raising capital and they will use our platform to effectively either they will offer this to their own employees. And that now we're talking about employee share plans where you want to reward employees or you want to make them committed to your to your aims as a business or, or external investors, maybe a new group of people, maybe crypto enthusiasts, investors that are not you know, that don't have a trading account, that don't know how to, to, to trade traditional stock. So these businesses can effectively, um, you know, sell equity into that space and, and um, you know, and, and really tap into a whole new world mm -hmm. because no one, people don't really know, but traditional shareholdings are declining, are massively in decline. Okay. Whereas, you know, crypto investments, uh, people playing around with new methods right. are increasing. So, there's a real need for something else and we want to build that and provide that something else. And yeah. clearly you also want to do it early in, in the sense that this is still very nice in technology and, and certainly in the context of uh, equity uh, companies, you'd be one of the, arguably one of the first to really uh, trial this. Is that the case? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what we're trying to do is, and this is why our app development is quite important, we want to make it very, very user friendly. So that moms and dads, dads or traditional businesses that have no idea how to raise money through an equity sale or a, a token sale or something like that, how they achieve that. And that's why our apps are, you wouldn't even know that there's a blockchain underneath, right? Because it shouldn't matter. Yeah, It's all about the, the speed and all the benefits that I mentioned before. Mm. And the blockchain is the infrastructure in the background, but you shouldn't have to use an app and feel there's technology underneath that I need to be aware of. That's right. very important. So you're trying to make it as seamless as possible, and it, and as yeah. you said, you know, for those who want to, you know, understand the technologies like we do, that's fantastic. But really, it's about the user experience. So, Sash, in context of competitors, particularly in, the, in those who are trying to build out apps and really bring it to the fore as you are, can you tell us if there are any in the space at all that are doing something similar, and what's your response to that? Yeah, there are, there are companies, and there are great companies. I mean, one of them is Polymath. Um, they're, they're, they're quite big in the US. I mean, they are in a very, very tough environment because they, they're, they're, they're building an equity uh, token or protocol in the US with the SEC all over them. And I think they still don't have clearance or I'm not sure. I'm not close to it. But they're doing a great job in terms of marketing. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're, they're quite big. So they're, they're a big competitor and we're looking at them. We're, we're learning from them. And I know they're looking at us as well. Sure. Um, and then there, there, are, there are other companies that are, that are popping on and off. And okay. uh, the big differentiator for us is uh, we know this. We've, we've done this for 20 years in the old world. And uh, it's not all about just, just doing an IPO or a, a token sale. Mm. It's about shareholder management and uh, all the features and services that come after you've launched uh, an equity offer are even more important than the equity offer in itself. And, and that's what we're focused on. So what you're essentially saying is the maturity of your and that you all have as a team is going to be fundamental for the second phase. You know, once you've finished and completed your first wave of in fund generation, it really tests you out in what you can do. So Polymath, as you mentioned, is a competitor. And you also alluded to the US. So are you not thinking in the US initially? Or, or are you, in fact, right from the outset, thinking globally? Uh, we think globally and we're quite opportunistic. I mean, we've got some opportunities in the US that we're talking about at the moment. But fundamentally, we're trying to solve a problem. The, the, the issue is always, as a business, you want to solve a problem that people have. In the US, there's no capital raising and fundraising problem. You can get venture capital money quickly. You get you get much more higher valuations than you have in Europe or in Asia. Okay. Whereas in Europe and Asia, you have you have really fragmented markets. You have real problems. Um, in Asia, for example, you have so many different areas. You know, you have Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore. Then you have South Korea. Then Japan is really really different. And then you have the mass of India. Um, so big, big markets. And we're primarily focusing at the moment on Asia, uh, okay. Southeast Asia and, and Europe, because that's our home turf. Sure. But we have opportunities in the US and uh, we, we try to focus on everything. And even in Australia, we will be mm. active quite soon. So there's lots of opportunities for, for these sort of things. But 
you, I mean, as I said before, there are a lot of there is competition, and I think competition is really good. It's a huge market, and we will not be able to grab the whole market or or, mm. um, or most of it. Uh, so there's com- there's space for everyone, and I think we all need to work together quite well mm. to really push back the old traditional. Um, how do you say the the the, the big tankers and and uh, battleships yeah. and uh, we're the we're the speedboats, right? Yes, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, we're trying to nibble away and really show people there's a whole different mechanism that Absolutely. we want to provide. So you <laughs> want to be the innovators in the space, you know, really uh, change the old guard into the new. So that, to do that, you need great partners as well, Sasha. So tell us a little bit about the three. You have uh, MW Partners, Unibright, whom I have spoken to before, and you have the Universität or Lich- of Liechtenstein, the university itself, which is a, a credible academic institution. Tell us about why they are important, but then really the key thing I do want to know is actually the, the partnerships we don't know from the white paper, the ones that you do actually know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so MW Partners, they helped us with the whole token sale advisory, community features. Again, we are all coming from the traditional world. We had no idea about the whole community aspect and how you grow a community. So MW helped us, helped us greatly. Right. They've also helped us getting into the Asian market, and uh, we will be working with them in, in future as well. So, so they've been really great from an advisory perspective. Okay. Great bunch of guys, very talented. You know, Michael is fantastic and we talk a lot and really good guy. Uh, Unibright, we met throughout our roadshows and, and, you know, they've done a token sale uh, just a few weeks ago. And they're, they're a German company. They, they built, they, they're simplifying the creation of smart contracts, right? They have this kind of template system and uh, they will be building a template for us so that you can, uh, effectively do an offer and it's it's basically just drag and drop through their platform that they, they're established software company we know them for quite some time and yes. uh, you know through our roadshows really great guys and it just clicked you know we we mm. just had the same personality software engineering approach and uh, and, and, no doubt, of, and, and no doubt similar work ethic as well yeah yeah absolutely really good guys and um, university of Liechtenstein, because we're we're headquartered and we're quite prominent in Liechtenstein, um, we're quite active in the Liechtenstein scene. I mean, we're sharing the house with um, Eternity, which you probably know, yes. um, and, and some other teams. I th- yeah, yeah there, 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 there are quite a lot of big teams, and we all know each other. We, we attend meetups together, we talk about technology together and sure. all that. And university, we because we there's a lot of R&D, there's a lot of scientific approaches, there are a lot of new approaches that we're doing. So with the University of Liechtenstein, we kicked off a project about valuation. How do you value a company? So if you, when you put an offer up, um, how do you determine the value of a company? Because you have the the valuation that is factual, which is basically your EBITDA times X, uh, your revenue projected over the next few years. And then you have the emotional value, which is I am the business owner and I feel my business is worth $100 billion and right. not not $10 million, as you said. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you have to find a balance. And we're working with the university on valuation models that are more scientific and other things. They have some... They want to get into blockchain and we're helping them with that. And for us, it's very important that we have university angles. And we also work with the university in Bristol and in all the locations we are, we want to make sure that we're staying very close to science and and university. And uh, also attract good people from that and, space. And yeah. Sasha, that's key because obviously, the, as you were talking about before, the underlying tech that's going to provide for a good service is quite complicated. It is quite complex by design. You must have yeah. great uh, academics to really support you in that process. And you have that with the University of, uh, of Liechtenstein. Sorry, my German is bad. <laughs> but I did also want to talk to you about those partnerships uh, that perhaps we haven't discussed, those that really are, you're now considering and that they are future partnerships. What can you tell us about those you're considering and how they relate to building out your business? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't, again, I can't mention names. I mean, that will all be announced through our, you know, through Telegram and our blog and, and everything. But we're working with stock exchanges, uh, with some larger ones, some regional ones. Uh, we're enga- engaged with uh, brokers, uh, traditional ones that want uh, want to support a new way of of raising uh, capital because they're feeling that their their business is being undermined. And yes, it is because that's what we're doing. Sure. Um, we're also <laughs> and having it. <a>, well, <laughs> and you have no reservations about it, clearly. Well, I mean, we're opportunistic, right? Um, we we're not we're not arrogant in saying we're changing the world on day one. It's mm. with technology, it's a gradual process. And I'm coming from the traditional world, 
and I have a lot of contacts in the traditional world, I would like to see them acknowledging there's a new world and new methods, but mm -hmm. a lot of these teams, they don't acknowledge that you actually need a lot of these um, you know, traditional players to help and support sure. you. And so Sasha, we want to be quite agnostic. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the agnosticism is important, obviously. It gives you a main yeah. sort of a, a yeah. central play or it allows you to sort of capitalize uh, through all different marketplaces. But you mentioned Asia and Europe being your sort of main focus initially because of the contacts. And given your experience, how confident are you to transform some of these more centralized contacts or contacts with centralized businesses rather in, and, and bring them on board? to onboard them onto a new platform and new way of thinking? Well, that's that's why I say it's a bit of a schizophrenic approach that we're applying. Mm -hmm. We are working with the regulators, we're working with traditional businesses, but at the same time, it's a decentralized environment we're building. So right. on the one hand, we're saying we will apply, we will be legal, we will do whatever it takes to protect investor data, business owner data, and that we actually know who the people are and that PEP and AML and all these checks are, are being managed throughout the process. But at the same time, we want to also, how do you say, to, to, to push the boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. We want to offer something that isn't there and I can't do that without breaking things, right? right. So uh, on the one hand, we will apply, um, comply, but on the other hand, we will push the boundaries to, to quite a hefty level, if I that see. makes sense. So you're yeah. breaking down barriers <laughs> that it really have been there for you know decades, if yeah. not centuries. And perhaps you know this is a good position for, to be in right now because you can lead the way in arguably what is a transition from an, a very archaic model into something that's going to enfranchise yeah. opportunity for users. So roadmap time, you mentioned before that you are right on track. But let's talk specifics in terms of right now we're in Q2. What are the, so perhaps two or three things that you're really proud of in terms of your achievements so far or even what you plan to do very soon? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for us, the whole focus is on the testnet, getting all the components set up and all that. Uh, we're building out wallet features at the moment. Um, so there's, there's something we're doing. Um, we're building over the next few months in terms of app development, we're building an an effectively offline register so that if you have equity but you don't want it tradable, you want equity just for yourself, we're, we're allowing that function to also be built on our blockchain. Right. That's an app that will be available. It will be free for everyone. So if you are a private business and you have equity, you have shareholders, mm -hmm. but you want, want to manage them somewhere, you can do that on us, on our blockchain, but it's not tradable, but it will be available. So a lot of these things are, we're quite proud of. And, and um, yeah, we are... We are recruiting heavily, we're adding a lot of people and uh, we're, we're with full steam ahead because now we're being measured on delivery and, and that's what we're keen on doing. I yeah. see and no doubt in that measurement is also factored in the community in themselves. So how are you going in terms of community engagement and what kind of social media are you employing to reach out to the wider, you know, wider audience globally? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, community work, we've, we've done quite a lot up to the token sale. We're a little bit in a wasteland um, at the moment, and we tried not to be, but just simply because of, you know, people were exhausted, you know, people had to focus on the product development. We couldn't really focus too much on our community. At the same time, we're trying to be there 24-7 as much as we can. Um, we're, we're recruiting more community members now that basically help us with the community because these are the community members participants are really, really important to us. They are the guys of the future that will utilize our platform, they right. utilize our product, they'll talk about us, and we need to nurture and manage them. Community work, marketing, uh, agency type of activity is really, really important to us. It's, it's difficult for us because we're not marketing guys, we're not designers, we're engineers, but uh, we're learning very, very fast. And we, we've got now a dedicated agency that will help us with brand awareness, PR, and these sort of things because it's all very, very important for our cause. Right? I see. So obviously you're doing some exciting things, Sasha. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to add as a final statement? Perhaps we haven't covered everything or you'd like to address to the you know, wider audience a key aspect that you, know, you feel passionate about with Chanium. I, th I think we feel passionate about it because we're not we're, we're we're quite an under the radar project, and that was intentional. We didn't want to do too much marketing. We didn't want to sell ourselves, and we want people to read our white paper. We want people to read our app, to to look at our apps. We want people to have a real dialogue for us because we're really trying a whole different method of raising capital, a whole new way of a global digital share certificate. And it's a very, very complex topic. And I stress everyone watching this um, 
this video, uh, go on our website, go on our community channels, read up about it and, yeah. and find out find out about we publish regular blogs about concepts and about how you do it in the old world and how it is done in the traditional world we will do a lot of more like that because it's there's a very very concept things and we're trying to simplify it yes well we really appreciate that and obviously sasha as you mentioned you're doing something that's innovative you're trying to reconceptualize global equity markets bringing in blockchain but more importantly cutting out that those middlemen and making it really yeah. valuable to people in ways that simply haven't been done before in history so once again you're creating that fair supranational uh, exchange system meaning that you are trying to literally break down all the barriers globally and make it one unified system for all so thank you very much for bringing that equity into it literally and also making it equitable for people um, so sasha raksha thank you for your time today we really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you as you update us as a you know interested community as you inform us through social media channels and more importantly as you become a successful business hopefully in the future thank you very much brad thanks very much You're welcome